Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and today we're going to look at the infotainment system on the 2025 Seat Ibiza. Now, this one's got around a 9-inch infotainment screen. It is all touchscreen-based, obviously. Um, it's got a fairly chunky uh, bezel on it here, so a lot of black plastic here, uh, which does have reflections and dust. Um, it's not a massive issue, um, but it does make the, the actual screen itself look relatively small, which is a bit of a pain. Um, other than that, it's not a very similar system to Skoda or VW. It's its sort of own infotainment screen, really, which isn't a massive issue. Um, it looks slightly dated, maybe slightly cheap um, in comparison to those systems, but it does get the job done, really. So in this video, we're going to walk through all the different apps on this screen, all the settings as well, and also how to use all the different items. Um, there is a video live now on the Interface Cars YouTube channel, which is a full car review of the Seat Ibiza. Um, check that video out in the top right corner or the description down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So first things first, again, nine inch infotainment screen around that sort of size. And we have got a fair amount of controls um, to our disposal. So we have got some off screen touch based controls here. So we've got a, a flag here, which takes you back to the map. Got a button here, which takes you to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, depending on which one is working. Uh, volume up and down. And we can turn the entire screen off if you want to as well. It's got the date and time displayed there. If you hit a long press, turn it back on again. Um, this is the main home screen, essentially. So we've got the map, Bluetooth, phone, tire pressures, driving data, and help. This button here um, takes you to all the apps in this one screen, or it takes you back to the home screen. Um, and there are some buttons down here. So we've got the map, shortcut, media, radio, phone, and settings. Um, in the top left-hand corner is the time and date, or just the time. Got the temperature outside, which is 15 degrees. Got battery level on my phone and the um, signal level on my phone as well. And then if we've got the um, the fact that the phone, the car is connected to the internet with the globe icon, uh, privacy information, and then there's a notifications tray as well. And if we swipe down this button here, we've got notifications in here. Got share position, which I haven't fully managed to get to work yet, um, but it is just telling you um, where you want the position to be shared with and what and on what services so um, if we click on privacy here it says that maximum privacy uh, no position data uh, use my position or share my position as well uh, and you've got automated driving development send data for function improvement which we'll do but we're not registered for that either uh, click on information here it tells you what things each thing does so we're going to go through all the apps one by one and show you how to use all of them. So the first one is radio. So in the radio app, we have got the option between different sources. We've got AM, FM, DAB, internet radio, my media, and then Bluetooth. This app is kind of like the media app and the, the radio app built into one. So most, most cars tend to do that as well. It's got AM here, um, got station list here. So you've got all the different kilohertz options in there. Um, presets, you've got saved. Station that's currently being played. And then settings, we will look at settings in a minute. Um, got FM, DAB, so again, a similar sort of thing, but it actually displays the, the actual stations. Um, also got internet radio, which I haven't managed to get to work properly yet. Um, it is currently unavailable. If you go to service management, have a quick look in here. So that internet radio doesn't work on this particular car. We've got Bluetooth as well. So at the moment, my phone's connected via Apple CarPlay and Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth is disconnected currently. And then also my media. So if you have got a USB device, you can plug a USB device in, in the bottom there and get access to those files if you want to go completely offline. You'll notice as well, every time my hand gets close to the touchscreen, the, the gestures appear. So at the moment, not, my, not much information is being displayed, but as my hand gets closer, look at all the icons. I've got some extra bits and pieces on there. So that's pretty good. Um, that's, the, that's the radio app. The, let's go back to the main screen here. Uh, we've also got media. As I said, it's exactly the same thing, but just a shortcut to the media options. So we've got all oh, the same things in there. So we're not going to go through that either. Uh, if we look at settings for the radio and the media, so we've got manage favorites in here. So that's all your different favorites in there. We've got sound, um, equalizer sound, that's all fine. Sound focus, um, driver or all, and then settings as well. And you can choose tones and volume levels as well, which is quite nice. Uh, if we go back to the radio, the settings on the radio were slightly different. So uh, we've got delete presets, traffic program, TP, station logos, radio text, and advanced settings. Um, so you've got auto select station logos, regions, uh, DAB announcements, switch to similar station as reception is poor, and DAB image gallery and news. There's some very standard options in there, really. Next app is telephone. So if Apple CarPlay is connected, you will get this to launch 
your phone. Um, you can also just choose connect via Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay. Um, you've got customer care, so that will call, call them. So that, no signal at all. Um, let's get rid of that. There we go. SOS emergency and settings. So you can select the mobile phone that's being used, or you can voicemail, manage favorites, select ringtone, sort by surname, and import contacts in there. And then that's fairly standard. If you click on this button here, it launches the phone app in Apple CarPlay, which is fairly typical of what systems tend to do. Nice little shortcut there. Um, if we click back to the app view here, uh, we've got navigation, which we've done. We've got vehicle, we've got driver assist. So these are the driver assistance features. Most of the options you can actually change from the um, driver's display here, which is quite good, but there are some options in here. So we click on the vehicle and that one we've got drowsiness monitoring. So that's on or off and sensitivity is medium, low or high. Click on this button here. The drowsiness monitor detects signs that the driver may be tired, which can help to prevent accidents. The drowsiness monitor issues recommendations to take breaks in good time. The time of day, driving duration or driving style may have impact. So in brand new vehicles, they tend to have cameras. Um, some of the Chinese vehicles tend to have cameras that watch you and check if you're yawning, but this is a fairly rudimentary system. Just checks your driving style, basically. So that can be turned on or off. And then if we click that button there, there is also this button. So uh, speed warning on or off. Again, that can be turned off nicely from the driver's display. But we can choose to turn it on or off, the speed warning display or sound or just a visual, which is really, really good. Um, so the little icon in the driver's display here. Warning threshold standard three or five, and an info sound when changing the maximum speed. So just audible alerts if you exceed the speed limit. Fairly standard, and that's nice and customizable. Uh, settings here, so you can go and get a bit more in depth into front assist, lane assist, or lane keeping system, same thing. Drowsiness and speed, it's a little shortcut in there, and you can customize each one which is fairly, fairly good, really. So also, we've got vehicle as well. So if we click on vehicle, this is sort of the trip computer stuff. So we have got since start, we've got 10 miles, 50 minutes, and then the MPG as well, and then the speed, and then the, the miles you've done, or the miles left in the tank. Um, we've got selections here, so you've got digital cockpit. Um, so you can choose exactly what is being displayed on the um, digital cockpit here. Weirdly, you can't uh, customize that from the digital cockpit itself, but you have to um, choose that in there. So I've got some dials, which is quite nice. We've got automatic classic V1. So in the in the little screen, the little circles in between each dial, you can choose what goes in there. We've got view two, so that's long term uh, mileage on long term hours, and then view three, and then route guide not active, classic as well. So that's no uh, information in the central bit. Just got dials itself, or automatic as well. Um, driving data. And then also got vehicle status as well. It says everything's all good, have a good journey. It says tire pressures have been checked, um, or check them when you can. And then settings here, so you've got uh, traction control is turned on. So that is not um, something you can turn on or off from anywhere physically on the vehicle, that's just off or on. Tires, so if you've got winter tires on the vehicle, you can set a speed warning. Then also set the um, tire pressures. Again, that's not something you can do from physically on the vehicle, um, tend to be in, in the screen here. Uh, light, so switch on time, medium, automatic headlight control in rain, convenience turn signal, um, in interior lighting, brightness, uh, and coming home function, leaving home as well. Uh, parking and maneuvering, rear volume, rear turn settings, entertainment volume reduction, uh, mirrors and wipers, so fold in when locking, uh, wipe automatically in rain, so that can be done by itself. Um, and then rear window wiping in reverse gear. That's fairly standard, something you can customize, which is quite nice. Um, opening and closing. So you've got uh, convenience opening all, or you can just have the driver or off. Door unlocking all doors and interior monitoring as well. Uh, instrument cluster, uh, content and digital speed display, speed warning or temperature. Uh, you can customize the, the list of icons in there, which is quite nice. Uh, units, oh. uh, time and date. So. Clock time sort is GPS, or it can be manual. Um, daylight saving time is something they have to do manually, which is a bit annoying. And then time and date format, 12 or 24 hours. And then the, the, the date format, you can have the American one, something else, or the correct one. <laughs> and then service as well. So that's the VIN number. Inspection is doing 18,000 miles. This car's only done 2,000 miles. It's fairly new, really. And then um, 603 days, and then the oil change. That's the vehicle settings. Um, let's go back to the main screen here. So you've got sound settings, which we looked at in the media app, so that's all fine. And then this one here, we've got help. Uh, we've got 
some information on how to use the screen. So you've got the display area and how to use various things. So if you want to explore how to use the vehicle, you can do, or you can watch this video. So users, so there is a SEAT app you can download for iPhone, um, but it allows you to do remote services with the vehicle and see where the car is and that sort of stuff. At the moment, I am the guest user. And we've got settings here. You can become the primary user to log in with your SEAT ID. Um, if you click add here, you can log in with your SEAT ID, uh, press login to use um, the account there, and you can um, do various things in there, which is quite nice. Next is settings. So this is going to be sort of the, the system settings versus sort of vehicle settings. So. We've got screen, time, time and date, language, additional keypad languages, Wi-Fi, voice control, uh, mobile devices, and sort of fun stuff in there. So screen, so you can switch off the screen in 10 seconds, so you can choose to have it on or off. Brightness, medium, or very low, or very high. Uh, proximity sensor, so that's the one that's um, figuring out if it <laughs> wants to display extra information for me um, based on where my hand is. Uh, show clock in standby mode, rear passenger detection tone, um, safety interruption enabling sound, touchscreen tone, menu button tone, hand gestures on or off, visual hand gesture feedback, and audible hand gesture feedback as well. What's got time and date, which we looked at a bit earlier, so that just tells you the time and date in there. Uh, got language mode, so all the different languages where sayouts are sold. Uh, additional keypad languages, so other languages there for the keyboard. Uh, units, so you've got distance, miles, speed in miles per hour, temperature in Celsius, volume in gallons fuel consumption in miles per gallons and pressure in bar. We've also got uh, voice control. So show in infotainment system, uh, wake word active. No idea what that wake word is. Um, got Wi-Fi. So you can connect your car to, to Wi-Fi networks or you can use the um, screen as a hotspot as well. Data connection, uh, data integrated SIM. Let's look at data plans. I'm not sure if this will load. So it does load. It says data plans. You can scan a QR code with Kivik Telecom um, and you can log in um, to set up as a SIM owner and get access to the internet via that way. Um, manage mobile devices. So you can get your phone connected there. Got available devices as well. Got restore factory settings. So you can completely delete the system uh, or restore the system to factory settings if you want to. Got copyright information in here. So VW customers, Skoda customers, and SEAT customers in there. Uh, got copyright and configuration wizard as well so that'll tell you exactly how to use it and you can customize where everything is so we don't show that again and lastly is app updates so if there are any updates for the apps that are built into the vehicle this will display those uh, information there um, and we'll wait for this to load so it says no app up updates available the system apps are up to date and you can see uh, some versions here so when they're updated um, so you can see exactly when all the apps are updated so 16th of december and 24th of october i've got legal information in here as well so that's pretty much it for the infotainment system on the 2025 Seat Ibiza. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to the Interface Cars. My name's Alex, and I'll see you again next time.